A casual fan may look at a football season beginning with the opening kickoff on a warm August evening and finishing when the clock reads zeros on a scoreboard in late fall. In reality, the hours of preparation begin much earlier. And while the action on the field comes to a temporary halt at the end of each autumn, the cycle never really ends. In 2004, a group of young men, fueled by the belief that as a team rather than as individuals, they could accomplish anything, initiated their efforts as soon as the 2003 season was done. And they remained dedicated to that goal throughout their trek. Some hopes went unfulfilled. Their accomplishments were many. Most of all, they learned that playing football at St. Ignatius is not just a destination. It's part of the continuing journey. The dedication to the idea of team was never more evident than with the 2004 Wildcats defense. A wonderful mix of veterans and newcomers, athletes and overachievers, they brought a zeal and camaraderie that was wonderful to watch. The opposition knew that whenever the Wildcat D was on the field, the heat was on. First team All-Ohio performers, co-captains Jim Ramella and Sean Cavanaugh led the way. Ramella lined up at several different spots for the front seven, while strong safety Cavanaugh simply was all over the field. Senior Jermaine Whitmore and juniors John Ryan, Marty Kern, Brian Neff and Riley Lauer were among the key contributors up front. The linebacking core, while not giant in size, was extremely athletic. Co-captain Alex Lambrinides, Jason Palumbo, and junior Dan Dowd combined to make more than 250 tackles on the season. In the secondary, Greg Bate performed well in his second year as a starter. While classmates Doug Mayer, Jeff King, and Kenny Rogers turned in solid efforts. The defense gave up less than 10 points per game during the regular season, and overall Ignatius opponents scored only two touchdowns in the first quarters of the 13 games played. Add in shutouts of Warren Harding and Friendship Edison, and it was easy to see that indeed, the heat was on. football journey may be continuous, it's also played out at a dizzying pace. 
with a multitude of challenges. Seven of the ten teams on the regular season slate made the playoffs. Benedictine won the Division III state title, while St. Francis and St. Joseph Prep won city crowns in Buffalo and Philadelphia. The first ever meeting between the Wildcats and St. Joe's, a longtime power in Philly, was a terrific effort. Junior quarterback Rudy Kerbis hooked up with classmate Robbie Paris on a pair of touchdowns. And the defense was spectacular. The Cats handled another trip to the Tigers' lair in Maslin. And the first regular season meeting with a team from Warren in nearly 80 years produced a surprising result. But of all the stops on the journey through the 2004 season, one always seems to matter just a little more. Because this is what it's all about, to get ready to play. Four seconds isn't a whole lot to ask, fellas. It's four seconds, got it? That's it. All the other stuff is worthless. It's four seconds, every play, of being determined to get this done. They're finished. You do your job. They're done. Let's go. This year's edition of the Holy War took on a special urgency. St. Edwards had been the top rated team in the area with seven wins on the field, only to lose four games by forfeit due to an ineligible player. The Eagles playoff hopes could end without a win against the Wildcats, and many experts did not give Ignatius much chance. The game's opening drive did little to change that thinking. Welcome back to Byers Field, opening drive for the Eagles. Two tight ends set, Baxter at a nine, and here's a handoff to Rose, wants to get around left hand, hit the two, falls forward, touchdown! Sean Cavanaugh came up on run support, he hit Paxton Rose. Play action, going to throw. Steps up, fires over the middle. Ferris got it. First down at the 13-yard line. On the left edge, Wildcats spread out two receivers. Baxton and I. Kervis will take it up the middle himself. He's in. Touchdown, St. Ignatius. Third and three at the 32, and a fake handoff. Gardner trying to get around the near end. Didn't do it. Pulled down from behind in the backfield. Alex Lambranini strung him up at the 34 for a loss of two. Here's the snap, ball is down, kick is up, it's got the distance, it is, no good, oh. wide right. Third down and five for the Eagles with 2.12 to go in the first half, 
Just outside the Ignatius 35. It will be a delay for Gardner, the quarterback. Nail at the line and driven back by two linebackers. Dan Dowd and Alex Lambertinas. Fourth down, here we go. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up. Again, it will have the distance, and it is no good. Wide right again. He'll drop back to throw with play action. He's going deep. Right got side wants Ryan Paris. Paris oh, goes up. Well, got he got a flag. Got a flag. <laughs> Adam Danko is on. He will attempt the field goal from the left hash. It'll be a 48 yard. This would tie the record. No, it beat it. Good snap. Ball is down. Kick is up. It is good. Oh, Adam. Adam Danko. Fake the handoff, Gardner draw, tries the left side, that won't work, no gain. Rug up by Jason Palumbo, also there, Marty Kern, the nose tackle, stuffed it out. Tankus, the lone setback, now Ramel in motion to the near sideline, handoff Stankus wants to run this way, got around one tackler across the 20, 25, and then tiptoes the sideline, got out of the 28, it appeared he was hit after the... From the 44, Kerbis will stay in the shotgun with the wind at his back as the Wildcats are moving left to right, takes the snap, fires on the left side, timing pattern for... Oh, oh he made a circus catch at the 30-yard line with Joe Kleinsmith all over him! Smith was holding his jersey on the way up. Paris went up with two hands, made the catch at the 32 for a first down and one of the best high school catches you'll see. Kerbis under center, Jamison and Stankus in an eye behind him. Kerbis to throw. Fakes, throws deep, right Hunt side. Down, down, Rigo. Yeah! Down! Chris Rigo caught it at the fingertips at the goal. Kyle goes into the holder. Joe Kleinsmith, 0 for 2 tonight, but he has plenty of leg. High snap. Ball is down. Kick is up. Distance is there. It is good. 47-yard field goal for Joe Kleinsmith, and he makes it 16 to 10. Wildcat lead, cut to six. Under center's Kerbis, the receiver to each side, backs in an offset eye, hand off to Stank, is trying to sweep the right side, he'll get there, 30, 35, 40, first down, 45, 50 down the sideline, and falls forward to the Eagle, 44. 740 to go in regulation. Again, a receiver to each side, backs in the offset eye, hand off Stank, has got a hold, 45, 40, cuts up field, 35, between two tacklers, and inside the 30 to the 28. Kerbis turns, gives the ball to Stank, has got a block, 20, get outside 15 to the 10 to the 5 touchdown Andy Stankus with an 18 yard run and the Wildcats go up by 12 second and 10 Eagles at their own 28 Gardner in the gun quarterback draw hit at the 25 got through it up to the 28 pulled backwards there and tackled by Dan Dowd who's been all over the field tonight Wildcats gonna blitz but it's picked up he's going deep Gardner over the middle intercepted at the 5 Kavanaugh 10 15, 20, tackle out of bounds at the 24-yard line. And they'll keep the ball on the ground at Stank. It's off tackle right. Oh, through. No! 35, 40, no, 10, 50. Two blockers and two men to beat 40. 30, cuts outside, 20, to the 10, to the 5, rung up at the 3-yard line. Whoa! Good snap on the field goal Got attempt. It. Yanko puts it up and through. He's 11 of 11 on field goals this season. Two for two tonight. Another memorable chapter in the Holy War. The Cats have now won 14 of their last 17 against the Eagles. And it was all about believing and having the determination to get it done. The Wildcats usually have one of the top offenses in the area, and the 2004 version took their fans on a wild ride. Get your motor running, head out on a highway, looking for adventure, in whatever comes our way. Yeah, darling, you wanna make it happen, take the world in a love embrace. Whether it was 
protecting the quarterback or opening holes for the running game, the offensive line was solid. Returning starter and co-captain Mike Sheridan garnered all state honors for his work at tackle. Other senior starters included John Barrett, Mike McKeon, Vinny Castragano, and Vanya Kosterman, with junior Mike Armagno also in the starting group. Jim Ramella went both ways, utilizing his talents at tight end with the offense. Fellow senior Colin Meter did a fine job as well at tight end, with contributions from two-way performer junior John Ryan. Senior running back Andrew Stank has turned in the third highest season rushing total in school history, over 1,300 yards, and Andy scored 16 times. Classmate Matt Jamison was his usual escort at fullback, and Jamo could pound it out when his number was called. Juniors Nick CQ and Scott Beal showed the promise of having big years next season. Junior quarterback Rudy Kerbis passed for nearly 1,900 yards and 25 scores in his first year as a starter. Rudy was on the all-district team with Stankus and his favorite target, junior Robbie Paris. Paris had 13 touchdowns among his 39 grabs. Senior Chris Rico scored six times and averaged over 23 yards per catch. And on special teams, all-district Adam Danko's 14 field goals were another school record, while MJ Yanni was Mr. Excitement on punt returns. The playoffs began with another matchup with Strongsville, the eighth time in the postseason. And it was the Mustangs who took the early lead on a long pass. It didn't take the Wildcats long to respond. The 73-yard score by Andrew Stankus energized Ignatius and on the ensuing kickoff, Dan Dowd recovered a ricocheting football. A few plays later, Rudy Kerbis and Jim Ramella put the Cats ahead to stay. For the rest of the first half, the defense pounded the Mustangs. And when Strongsville did something positive, people like Sean Cavanaugh and Dan Dowd turned it right around. That turnover set up a spectacular hookup from Rudy Kervis to Robbie Barris. Leading to another score by Stankis. On its next possession, the Wildcats used its little wonder, 5'10", 170-pound Andy Stankus on a screen pass to set up a 28-yard field goal from Adam Danko. The defense created another scoring chance late in the first half when Sean Cavanaugh made this pickoff. And in the closing seconds, it was Danko again. 27-7 at halftime. Strongsville would score again on a pass play in the third quarter, but the Wildcats had an answer. Rudy and Robbie one more time. The Strongsville ground game had no luck against the aggressive Wildcat D. 
The Ignatius line, however, provided many opportunities for Andy Stankus, and his 220 yards rushing was the fifth highest total in school history. When Matt Jamison helped set up the third touchdown of the night for Stankus, there was little wonder about the final result. The Cats move on, 48-21. The Cats took the field at Lakewood Stadium to face Solon in the regional semis. A fourth down Rudy Kerbis scramble kept the opening drive alive. A third down toss to senior Nathan Zowie moved the chains again. And Andy Stankus finished off the drive. Jim Ramella and Sean Cavanaugh led a stalwart defensive effort that held the Comets to only one first down in the opening half. But the Wildcats missed out on several scoring chances with goal line fumbles. No matter for the D, they stuffed Solon deep in their own territory. With great field position, Rudy Kerbis hooked up with senior tight end Colin Meter. The constant pressure by the Ignatius defense forced Solon into another turnover. Which was converted into six points on a Kerbis rocket to Chris Rigo. And the Cats weren't done. More stout work grounded the Comets offense, enabling another airstrike to Chris Rigo to make it 28 to nothing. Ignatius put the game to rest in the third period with the same script, relentless defense and a resourceful offense. The 34-7 triumph moved the Wildcats into the regional finals for the 14th time. Where a talented Glenville team awaited. A full house was on hand for the matchup with Glenville. A big speedy team that had won the state track championship last spring. Ignatius moved to midfield on the game's first drive where junior Bill O'Malley pinned Glenville deep with a perfect punt. On the next play, Jim Ramella fell on a fumble in the end zone and the Wildcats grabbed the early advantage. But then the game changed. The Tar Blooders would control the tempo for the rest of the contest. Nearly a two to one time of possession advantage. Yet unbelievably, the Ignatius defense would hang tough. Over the next two and a half quarters, they battled the Tar Blooders. Four different drives, Glenville would get inside the Wildcat 10-yard line. And each time, Ignatius would refuse to yield.
Finally, Glenville cracked through late in the third period. The Wildcat offense would respond to maintain the lead. But the momentum was clearly against Ignatius, and in the closing minutes, a second fourth quarter score gave Glenville the lead. The Cats gave it one last effort. But on this night, the journey would stop short of its final destination. The pain of falling short when a reward draws close is difficult, but those feelings are transitory. Goals may not be reached every time, but to understand what can be gained when all share in the same belief and the experience of the process to reach a goal is a special gift. That is the essence of the tradition of football at St. Ignatius. You're making me happiest guy in the world, I'll tell you that. Because you love this game. You love it. You love hitting people. And you love blocking people. Making the catches. Who cares who scores? We love this football game. Got it? Make yourself proud because you know you owe yourself that. You owe yourself that. You look in the mirror tonight and you'll be proud of what you did. Got it? In 2004, a dedicated group of Wildcats committed themselves to a cause. They were told by some that they didn't stack up to others, that they didn't quite have enough. A team's heart cannot be measured, however, and when you believe you can, great things can happen. In a season of thrills and heartaches, these men did themselves proud. Now a new group of Wildcats will begin its preparations, eager for their chance to bring glory to the blue and gold, anxious to take their turn on the continuing journey that is St. Ignatius football. All they have to do is believe. St. Ignatius, and that's what makes it special, got it? That's what makes it special. That's what you represent. You represent those people over there. You see that? You represent all these people. You wouldn't let them down, Kevin. You're not gonna let this down. Even what your heart is saying, hear the melody that's playing. There's no time to waste. There's so much to celebrate. Believe in what you feel inside and give your dreams the wings to fly.
Final Jeopardy category. Here it is. 